Hi guys, welcome to The Smart Student. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Today, I'm gonna to be doing an APA 7th edition reference list tutorial. Now, I spent the last three weeks with my head buried in the publication manual. I don't recommend doing this on your own. That's why I'm here doing this for you. That being said, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so let me tell you exactly how this video is going to work so you can use it in the best way that suits your needs. All right, first things first, there are timestamps listed in the description of this video. So if you wanna skip anything or navigate your way back and forth through some of the sections, those are what you're gonna to wanna to use to do that. Secondly, all of the material that I'm going to be using or referencing in this tutorial will also be included in the description with links down below. This includes a printable document of the actual reference list that I'm going to be using in the demonstration portion. The reason I've included that is because depending on what you're watching this tutorial, it might be harder to see some of the smaller details like parentheses, periods, commas. So if you want something easier to follow along, I suggest printing that out. Now, lastly, just so you're clear and you know you're in the right place, this is an APA 7th edition reference list tutorial and it's gonna include the basic foundation of an APA reference, the two different formatting patterns that APA references use, and I'm gonna walk you through real examples explaining how to reference web pages, journal articles, newspapers, and magazine articles. If you're looking for other APA 7th edition tutorials, again, check the links in the description below. But all right, let's go ahead and dive into the first section of this video, which is the foundation of an APA reference. So to put this plainly, the purpose of a reference is twofold. One, it gives you, the writer, the opportunity to give credit where credit's due. And two, it gives the reader the option to access or retrieve any sources you reference in your writing. Hence, why it's called a reference list. Now, getting into the foundation of an APA reference, no matter what you're trying to cite, they are all made up of four elements. You have the author, the date, the title and the source and the easiest way to remember these are like this the author who wrote this work the date when was this work published the title what is this work called the source where can i retrieve this work if you can remember that all references are made up of those four elements this is going to help you cite any type of source because you know what to look for now if what you're trying to cite doesn't have a source Technically, this is not a source you would cite in the reference list because in order to be a reference, the reader needs to be able to reference it. There are some exceptions that would be considered personal communications like an email or a classroom lecture, but even those would only be cited within text citations. They still wouldn't be included in your reference list. Real quick, if you're wondering, what do I do if what I'm trying to source is missing one of the other elements like the author or the date? That's a great question because that does happen. Now, for time purposes, I'm not going to explain that in this video, but what I've done is I included this awesome chart here straight from the publication manual that explains to you what to do when one of your elements are missing. All right, guys, now moving on to the formatting of an APA reference. The foundation that I just discussed is what you're looking for. The formatting is how you're going to structure them in your reference list. And under APA 7th edition, there are two formatting patterns that every reference follows. All references follow either an italic title or an italic source formatting pattern. So you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull up my screen where I created templates and examples of what these two formatting patterns look like. So as you can see here, all references either follow an italic title or an italic source referencing pattern. To simplify this, all works that stand alone follow the italic title pattern and all works that are a part of a greater whole follow the italic sourcing pattern. Examples of works that stand alone include things like books, web pages, reports, dissertations, theses, and conference presentations. On the other hand, works that are a part of a greater whole means that they are things like journal articles, magazine articles, newspaper articles, edited book chapters. They are just a part of something as a whole. So as you can see here in the template that I created for the italic title for works that stand alone, the title of the work is italicized. The example is an example of a book, and as you can see here, the title is italicized. 
Now for the italic source, for works that are a part of a greater whole, the source name is what's going to be italicized. In this example, you can see here that the name of the source, which in this case is the name of a journal, the referenceless entry is italicized. So to conclude this section of the video, I would argue that this is the most important part because if you can remember that all APA references are made up of those four elements and the depending on the two branches of the type of source it is, it's made up of those two formatting patterns, you can cite any type of reference. Anyways, now that you have the basics, let's go ahead and dive into the fun part. Well, maybe not the fun part, but we're going to try and make it fun, am I right? Try not to fall asleep. Hello everyone, welcome into my computer. I'm using Google Docs on a MacBook for this demonstration. If you're using a PC or a different software like Microsoft Word, please note that where you find things in the menu bar will be slightly different, but your end result should look the same, meaning that your reference list should look similar to mine. But let's go ahead and get started by going over the APA formatting for the actual reference page. As a rule of thumb, the reference page will always start on the first blank page after your last page of your paper. So very simple, as you see here, if this was the end of my paper, I would simply hit enter until I reach the first blank document. Your reference list will follow the same formatting as the rest of your paper, meaning that it will use the same font and it should be double spaced. If you'd like to note, the page number still continues in the right hand corner. This tutorial is using the font Times New Roman at a size 12. The first thing you'll want to do to begin your reference list is to type the word references in boldface in the center of your paper. You can center your text by coming up to the toolbar and selecting the center icon. In order to bold your text, you can either select the bold from the menu bar or you can hit Ctrl B or Command B. Here you will type out references. When you're finished, the first entry in your reference list will begin on the very next line after references. You do not want to add an extra space between the two. To start your first reference, simply hit enter and align your text flush left like this. You'll want to make sure that you unbold your text as well. All reference list entries will start on the left and follow a hanging indent format. A hanging indent is the indentation of the lines preceding the first line in the paragraph. I like to think of this as a reverse indent where the first line starts on the left and each subsequent line underneath starts indented inward by one half inch. Your document should already be set up in double spacing, but I'm going to cover how to do that here in case it's not. In order to set up the double spacing, you will select line spacing in the toolbar and select double. If you don't have the line spacing button in the toolbar, it will most likely be located under format. To set up the hanging indent, you will select format from the toolbar, then select align and indent, then you'll want to select indentation options. From here, you will select hanging, which is located under special indent. The default setting should be set to 0.5, which is one half inch. Now that your document is formatted correctly, let's go ahead and go over our reference list examples. In order to demonstrate them, I've gone ahead and copy and pasted them by category rather than alphabetical order, as you can see here. When I'm finished going through the different examples, I will realign these in alphabetical order per APA 7th edition standards. So that you are able to see exactly what I'm talking about, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you get a close-up look of each reference. The first category of references I'm gonna demonstrate for you are going to be web pages, and we're gonna start with a web page from a website with an individual author. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video about the basic foundations of every reference, you will want to look for the four elements, which is an author, the date, the title, and the source. So when you are citing a web page, you again are going to be looking for the author, the publication date, the title of the article, the source, which is going to include the website and the source location, which will either be a URL or a DOI. If you'd like more information on the difference between a URL and a DOI and how to look for them, there is a link to a short video in the description below. If you remember the formatting patterns, a web page falls under a work that stands alone. 
So for this reference list entry, it will be formatted with an italic title. All right, so in this first example, you would start by including the author's name. The way you would include the author's name is by including their last name first, followed by a comma, followed by the initial of their first name, followed by a period. If the author's middle name was included, you would add the first initial of their middle name, followed by a period directly after the period following their first initial. After you are finished with the author element of this reference, you will hit the spacebar once to start the next element. I'm saying this now because you should always have one space between each element, no more, no less. Next, you will include the publication date of this web page. The date should always be enclosed by parentheses, followed by a period after the second parenthesis. As you can see here, the full date is listed with the year in front, followed by the month and the day. This is how you will order all reference list entries for dates that include more than just the year. If there is no date, you would write N period D in lowercase letters between the parentheses where the date would go. It would look like this. Please note how there is a period after the N, after the D, as well as after the last parenthesis. Moving on to the article of the title. You would type it out in italicized font followed by a period, as you can see here. The title of the article should be written in sentence case, which means you would write out the title as you would a normal sentence where the first word is capitalized and the rest starts with lowercase letters. I would like to make a few notes on reference list titles before we move on. First, if the title ends with a different punctuation mark other than a period, such as a question mark, you would end the title with the question mark instead of the period. Second, if the title is all proper nouns, such as the name of a person, you would write out the title in capital case, meaning each word is capitalized. If you have a punctuation mark in the middle, like you see we do here, the very next word would start with a capital and follow the same sentence case formatting. The last portion is the source, which for a website will include the website's name as well as either the URL or the DOI. The title of the website will be typed out like you see here, and please note that it is not italicized. The reason there is an ampersand sign here in place of the word and is because this is how the title is typed out on the website. Therefore, this is how you should include it in your reference list. After your title is typed out, you will conclude it with a period. To finish this reference, you would include the source locator, which in this case is a URL. Please note that there is no period after the URL. As a rule of thumb, you should never put a period after either a DOI or a URL because it will mess up the link's functionality. And if you notice, the URL in this source is live, meaning that I can click on it and it would take me to the website of where this source was located. The reason it is live is because under APA 7th edition, if the reference you are citing is online, then you should leave the link active so the reader can easily retrieve it. If you would like to remove the hyperlink so it is not live, you would simply hover over the link, do a two finger click, and remove the link like so. Since this is a website, I'm going to leave the link live. All right, moving on to the next source, which is a web page on a website with a group author. Group authors are things like government agencies, associations, nonprofit organizations, businesses, hospitals, and so forth. All of the formatting will stay the same, just as if this were an individual author, except, as you can see here, there is no website listed. The reason there is no website listed is because the name of the group author and the website are the same. In other words, in this example, Canadian Cancer Society is both the group author and the name of the website. Therefore, adding it in the website portion would be considered redundant. But starting with the author, as you can see here, the group author is typed out in capital case followed by a period. The full date is included following the same formatting with the year in front followed by a comma followed by the month and the day enclosed in parentheses ending with a period. Next is the title of the article written out in italics ended with a period as well. Lastly, I have included the URL link which I have left live because again, this is a web page on a website. Great, now let's go ahead and move on to journal articles. 
Journal articles are known as periodicals in the APA publication manual because they are published at continuous intervals, also known as time periods. So along with the journal articles, I'm going to include a newspaper article and a magazine article at the end because they follow very similar formatting principles. These are great examples of works that are a part of a greater whole, meaning that they will all follow the same italic source formatting pattern. In order to cite a journal article, you will need the authors, the year the article is published, the title of the article, and the source, which is the journal it was published in. This will include the volume number, issue number, page numbers, and the source locator, which again is either the DOI or the URL. In this first example, we're gonna go over a journal article with one author. To start, you would type out the author's full last name, followed by a comma, followed by the first initial of their first name, followed by a period, and as you can see here, this author's middle name was included. Please note that the middle name follows the same formatting as the first name, it simply is included after the first name. Journal articles only require the year of publication, which makes this step fairly easy. Simply type out the year in parentheses like you see here, followed by a period. Next, you will want to include the title of the article. I chose this example to demonstrate how you would include a title that ended with a different punctuation, such as a question mark. Otherwise, the title follows the same sentence case formatting, and again, if there is a punctuation in the middle of the title, you would begin the next part of the title following the same sentence case, meaning the first word is capitalized. Starting with the name of the journal the article was published in, you would type it out in italics, followed by a comma. Next, you would type out the volume number, followed by the issue number enclosed in parentheses, ending with a comma. Now, a couple things I would like to note here. The volume number should be typed out in italics, while the issue number is not. Also, notice how there is not a space between the two. Next, you will list the page numbers of the article separated by a hyphen ending with a period. Again, note how there are no spaces between the numbers in the hyphen. To finish the source portion of this reference list entry, you will want to include the source locator, which in this case is a DOI. Remember, if the source is published online, you will want to leave the link active, like I have here. Real quick, I'd like to add, if you're referencing a journal article where you can't find the DOI number, crossreference.org is a wonderful resource that allows you to search for the DOI using their search function. So let's say this reference list was missing their DOI number. I could simply use the article title, search for it under metadata, and as you can see here, this first entry is the source that I'm citing, and right here is the DOI where I would simply copy and paste into my document. Your journal article may not always be the first entry. I got lucky on this one. Sometimes you'll have to search through here, but overall crossreference.org is a great resource for finding missing DOI numbers. Great. Let's go ahead and move on to the next example, which is a journal article with two authors. The reason I'm including these next examples is so you can see an example of how you would cite a reference with more than one author. When you have two authors, they should be separated by a comma and an ampersand sign. So if you notice, the last name of the first author is typed out as normal, followed by a comma, followed by the first initial of the first name, followed by a period, followed by the first initial of the middle name, followed by a period, separated by the comma, the ampersand sign, and the second author follows the exact same formatting, ending with a period. The rest of the reference follows the same formatting, including the date, the title of the article, the source, which includes the journal in which the article is published in, the volume number, the issue number, the page numbers, and lastly, the DOI number, which is the source locator. Now, moving on to the next example, which is a journal article with multiple authors. 
Under APA 7th edition, if you have between 3 and 20 authors, the formatting will always stay the same, meaning the amount of authors you include in your reference list entry should match the amount of authors that are listed in the article. So if you have six authors listed in your article, then you should include all six of them like you see here. For example, here is the article, here are the six authors listed out, and here they are listed in this reference. All of the authors will be included normally, and the last two authors will be separated with a comma and an ampersand, just as they were in the example of two authors. As you can see, the rest of the reference follows the same formatting principles. Now, what happens when you have more than 20 authors? This is not common, but I'm going to include it here real quickly for anybody that it might apply to. If you have more than 20 authors, you would include the first 19 names followed by an ellipsis, which is these three consecutive periods followed by the last author that's included in the article. Everything else in the reference will remain the same. If you'll notice, the authors are not listed in alphabetical order. The reason for this is because in an article, a website, anything you're trying to reference, authors are listed in the order of the time and the effort they put into the project. In other words, the author who contributes the most is always listed first, followed by the rest in the order they contributed to the project. All right, moving on to the last two examples in this tutorial, which will be a newspaper article and a magazine article. For both of these resources, you'll want to follow similar APA guidelines to formatting journal articles where you would include the author, the date of publication, title of the article, and the source which it was published in, either the newspaper or the magazine, along with any relevant volume numbers, issue numbers, page numbers, and of course the source locator. The major difference to note here is the date portion of the element. If the month and day is listed, you will want to include that alongside the year in your reference list entry. So starting with this magazine article, as you can see here, we have the author listed, followed by the date, including the month, including the month. Here is the title of the magazine article typed out in sentence case, followed by the name of the magazine typed out in italics, followed by the volume number, the issue number, and the relevant page number. The reason I chose this magazine article for this demonstration is because note that there is no source locator included. This is because there is no DOI listed on this magazine, and because I'm not referring to the online version of this magazine article, I would not include a URL. Therefore, the source locator is omitted from this entry. Now, Moving down to the newspaper article, I wanted to use this as an example because this one is referencing the online source. Therefore, the source locator is a URL link. As you can see, the rest of the reference is listed out in the correct APA formatting. All right, now that we have gone through all of the examples in this demonstration, I'm going to show you what a finished document should look like. I've gone ahead and rearranged this document in alphabetical order. Make sure to take note of the formatting that we went over in the beginning of the video. See how the word references is bolded and centered in the middle of the paper. The first reference starts directly underneath left face following a hanging indent formation. Now I just barely scratched the surface on the different types of works, articles, things you can reference in your papers. But if you understood what we just went over, you have a basic, I would argue a good understanding of APA referencing that should be able to hold you over. And again, if you're looking Looking for other types of sources, as I make those videos, I'm going to link them in this video. So be sure to check the description and see if there's something else. Drop a question down in the comment section below, join the Facebook group, ask your questions there. But in conclusion, I hope this helped you out. I know how difficult and complicated APA referencing can be and I hope that I was able to help you clarify or just guide you in some way, shape or form. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course subscribe for more videos like this week if you want to be the smart student studying smarter, not harder. Thank you.